Algeria's parliament has appointed Upper House Chairman Abdelkader bin Salah as interim president after unrelenting protests forced Abdelaziz Bouteflika to resign. Bin Salah, who's 77, will take over the reins until new elections are held within 90 days. Now, he's been chosen in accordance with the constitution, but is part of the former president's inner circle and the political establishment that people want to remove. Well, thousands have been back out on the streets voicing their anger about Ben Salah's appointment. There are also big questions about how Algeria's powerful military will react. Well, let's look at some of the key dates and events leading up to the former president's resignation. On February the 22nd, Bouteflika announced his bid to run for a fifth term. And that's when protests began. The 82-year-old had already been in power for 20 years. Within days, Algerians living outside the country also called for him to go, especially in France, which has nearly 2 million people of Algerian origin. By March 11th, the president was forced to reverse his re-election bid, but he postponed April's polls and said he'd stay on until a new constitution is adopted. He also made the interior minister his new prime minister and promised political reforms. Well, soon the army stepped in, the chief of staff there, calling for the president to be removed because of ill health. And that was on constitutional grounds, but it's done little to convince the protesters who've always maintained that they want a national government of consensus instead of the army to manage this transition period, which officially began with Bouteflika's resignation on April 2nd. Well, earlier we spoke to Amina Afaf Shayeb, who's an Algerian activist. She told us more about why people like her aren't willing to accept Abdul Qadir bin Salah. What is worrisome is that uh, the 90 days ahead of us, uh, the maximum duration of 90 days, where this uh, interim president will have to organize presidential elections. And uh, these presidential elections are not what the people, what the 20 million, million Algerians have been calling for. 90 days is merely enough time for the system, as we call it here in Algeria, the regime, uh, to maintain itself and give itself a new figure, a new facade. Uh, what we want is a democracy, uh, huge reforms, uh, institutional reforms. And uh, I highly doubt that Mr. Bin Saleh, who is the product uh, of the system, uh, that he would be able to uh, steer us towards that. What we need is a transitional government. What we need is a transition phase to put us on the right track of a, re of a real republic, of a democracy, where all, where all Algerians would participate as real citizens. Well, Al Jazeera's Hashem Ahalbara has covered this story extensively and is with me now. Uh, Hashem, uh, just bring us up to speed with what's been happening since that announcement earlier on. Anger across the streets of Algeria. People mm. are saying this is a uh, this is a betrayal of the spirit of pro-democracy movement that has been asking for genuine reform. And they insisted that they don't want to see Abdel Qadir bin Salah as interim president and that this announcement today is just going to further strain relations. We've seen thousands of people on the streets of uh, uh, Algiers, the capital, across the country. Uh, police forces had to use water cannon in some areas, particularly in the capital, uh, Algiers, because the people are really angry about that announcement. They were hoping to see something different. They were hoping to see something like a national unity government instead of someone who has been part of the political establishment that was groomed by former President Abdel Aziz Bouteflika take over. Now, we understand and we have understood for, for many weeks now that they have been calling for this complete overhaul. Uh, the protesters want a complete overhaul of the political establishment. But uh, realistically, how likely is that to take place? Because the army here, they are following the constitutional procedures uh, which are already laid down. I think the army is pretty much moving towards this particular direction, which is within the constitution by triggering Article 102. Two, you have an interim president in Algeria. For them, this is uh, an indication that 
there will be no power vacuum. And then after 90 days, you will see new parliamentary and presidential election. I think the demands by the people about a radical uh, overhaul of the political elite that would pave the way to a new institution to take over and shape the future of the country is unlikely because the army is pretty much concerned about anything that would lead to a power vacuum, particularly in a place in Algeria. And I think they have been determined to show the world that while they respect the choice of the people, but however, it has to go through the, uh, the constitution. And the, when you say the constitution is 102, it's the Abdul Qadir bin Saleh as, uh, 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 as a president. Will he be able to contain the, uh, the, the discontent? I don't think so, because he's widely discredited by the Algerian people. And I think the army has another option, which is to rally support within the opposition and the protesters and tell them, you know what, we will be the guarantors. Therefore, we can give you more political say when it comes to drafting the new constitution. Well, I was going to say, is there this middle way? What option is there? Because already we've seen large numbers uh, of protesters coming out into the streets with the moments of that announcement being made. But, of course, the country is still governed by the Constitution. Is there a third way that will prevent this escalating? We have to wait and see what will be the reactions over the coming hours from the different key players in Algeria. But, however, there were some dramatic moments inside the parliament when it was convenient to announce the, the appointment of the interim president. Uh, some political parties walked out of the building. Others contested the whole thing, saying that they were addressing Ben Saleh himself, telling him, you're not a legitimate uh, president for Algeria, therefore you have to go. And that could be uh, indicative of further strained relations between the opposition and the protesters on one hand and the political establishment. Unless, unless in the coming days, the army decides along with the opposition that although this could look like a placebo, but it could be the only way out for a, for a country like Algeria. This is one of the most powerful countries in North Africa, widely seen by the EU and the US as a bulwark against instability and extremism in the region. Its, neighboring, uh, its neighbor, Libya, is now having a huge political problem, further instability and the potential for a civil war. I think the international community would definitely be supportive of this move, which is basically the... Article 102. OK, Hashem, uh, a very fluid situation, one we'll continue to keep an eye on. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for bringing us up to speed. Uh, let's stay with this. Uh, Jamal Edin Talib is an Algerian writer and journalist. He's joining us uh, live from London via Skype. Um, if I could just get your initial reaction to the uh, appointment of Ben Salah as interim leader. It is a clear provocation. That's what I see it. And all Algerians, um, um, uh, you can see it. You can see the anger in the social media. Uh, quickly, they took to streets. Algerians, uh, students mainly in all over Algeria. Uh, they, 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 they don't want uh, Ben Saleh, one of the henchmen of Bouteflika, one of the first people to call him for, uh, for uh, the, the fifth time. He even said that who is against Bouteflika is a traitor. And now they want to impose this uh, well-hated uh, figure or uh, faces or faces of the regime. Uh, even there is even the constitution. There is some questions regarding his constitutionality. If you, if you say, if you say, if I say so, because his original uh, nationality is not Algerian. His original nationality is Moroccan, and the constitution forbid that a person like him. Um, will have this position as uh, uh, the chairman of the upper house of the parliament. There is a sense of provocation and there is a big anger expressed now in the streets of Algeria and in social media. If the, the, army, the army say they're following this path that has been laid down by the constitution. I mean, what other options are there? There is the, there is the, oh, the, the problem in Algeria is the political. And so I arguing that even the constitution, there is articles, number seven, even the, the chief of the army referred to it at some point, number, uh, uh, article seven and article eight, which call for the, the source of, uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, people are the source of uh, everything, but they choose to go to this uh, uh, constitu constitutional uh, solution um, it's clear that the army don't want to let go. Uh, they want to be in control, uh, to put maybe a facade. 
There is even now speculations that this move of the parliament, uh, it, it should have been uh, uh, with the consultation of the army. And others are suspecting that there is a setup that the chief of the army who should address Algeria today, he is in a visit in the second city in western city of Oran now. Maybe some are suspecting there is like a setup that at the end the, the chief of the army will present himself as a saver and then he will fulfill uh, uh, what the people want, the removal of Ben Saleh and uh, also the government, the same government appointed by Bouteflika, led by uh, uh, well, a well-hated figure as well of the regime, the uh, former uh, interior minister.